Welcome to 5 and 5 from One Stop Co-op Shop, where I discuss five key design decisions about a game in about five minutes. I'm Michael Kelly, and today we're looking at Detective City of Angels from Van Ryder Games. Quick disclosure, I traded for this game. This is not a review copy, but Van Ryder Games has published one of our designs, Salvation Road, in the past, so there is a little bit of history here. Now, if you watch my playthrough, you already know this, but I did not realize this game had solo and co-op play until Liz from Beyond Solitaire pointed it out. And I love unlock games, I love mysteries, I love Sherlock Holmes consulting detectives, so once I knew that, I was all in. But does this game conjure up classics like The Big Sleep and The Third Man, or is it a dud? Let's find out and get to the list. So the first thing I want to note about the game, a pro, is how quick it is to set up, how quick it is to play, and how accessible and simple the rules are to learn. Setup takes moments. It's actually simpler in the solo and co-op mode than it is in competitive. And there are only four action types in solo and co-op, and two of them are basically identical, so it's really just learning three actions. Super fast, super simple. And the cases themselves, except for the hardest ones, range from about 45 minutes to an hour to play solo or co-op. So really, really fast, nice time frame to drop into any game night. Number four is another pro, and that's the general presentation of the game and its implementation of its theme. First of all, the art is great. It's evocative. I love the board, which is based on a historical board of Los Angeles. The characters look great. They recorded and made available for free this narration before each case. Check the playthrough if you want to hear an example of that. And overall, as an aspiring writer myself, who's been fighting my way through one of our games with a lot of narrative, I really like the story here. I think the responses are quick to read, so you're not reading like pages and pages of text, but they're also evocative. They have fun dialogue, fun slang from from the time period. Overall, it's just a cool experience, definitely gets you into that noir mood. For number three, we're going to get into a bit of a mix, and that's the challenge and stress system within the questioning of the game. Now, I'm going to talk about the questioning itself later, but basically whenever you talk to a suspect, you have the option to challenge them and say they're not telling you the whole truth or that they're lying. And when you do this, if you're right, you get a leverage token on them and you get to see their real answers. You can kind of push them for more answers later for free, basically. But if you're wrong, you have to flip a stress token. If you do that three times, you lose one day, which could be about 10% of your entire investigating time. So it is a cool mechanic. It's fun to catch people in lies or have a hunch that they're not telling you something and push them further. But on the negative side, I usually don't feel like the stress is nasty enough. Maybe having to get three to lose a day just feels like too much. So in many cases, I felt like I've just been able to challenge everybody on almost every question and not really suffer too much, which does take away the tension of the mechanic. Number two is another mix, and a pretty important one, and that's the mysteries themselves and how difficult they are to solve. These mysteries were designed, I think, primarily for the competitive mode, where they expect players to be fighting and racing each other. So when you take away that pressure, I do feel like maybe they edge a little bit easier than I'd like, because you don't have all these other things that kind of take up your time. But on the positive side, I will say they're structured and written really well. They do a great job of putting in red herrings that can lead you off the path and confuse you. And even for the easy ones, I've always had a great time. The story is really fun and just kind of the mystery you solve is always engaging. All right, my number one, I mentioned it earlier, but that is the question matrix and how you interrogate suspects. So you have a row of case cards for each game, but you won't have them all available at first. You have to find the murder weapon. You have to discover evidence. You have to find out about parties you weren't even aware of. And whenever you talk to a suspect, you can ask them about any card you have knowledge of. Making those tough choices of who to ask which questions because you do not have time to ask everyone everything is fun, tense, and exciting. So overall, do I like Detective? Yes, I've been having an awesome time with it. It brings the theme to life and it's a lot of fun. But here's the thing. I followed the recommendation by Liz from Beyond Solitaire to play solo first and then become the chisel in a competitive game to kind of expand the gameplay. And I think if you're going to do that, this game is phenomenal. You're going to get, just in the base game, nine solo or co-op plays of cases that are fun, that have kind of a continuing storyline, are really, really intense. And then you're going to up the challenge, up the excitement, and become kind of the game master for your friends and play at least nine more times, if not more, because you can do the chisel roll for so many different groups. And I do have to say that while solo and co-op are fun, playing competitive is even better because you add in money and resources and the competition for evidence and you can take a gun and not let anybody else see it. It's just a lot of fun and kind of cutthroat crazy detective work. 
On the other hand, if you liked Detective from Portal Games and you want two or three hour play sessions and you want to take copious notes like in Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective, if you want the solo cooperative experience to be the be-all, end-all and you plan to not play at all competitive and you don't want to be the game master, then this game might not be as worth it for you. The nine cases will give you, you know, maybe nine or ten hours of solo gameplay. And then if that's it, you just want to do solo, you'll have to trade it or sell it to somebody else. So in short, I fully recommend this game if you're doing solo mixed with competitive. But if you're just getting it for the co-op experience, there might be better, fuller games out there for your money. Good gaming everyone and I'll see you at the next stop.